Well, it's finally happened. The reign of Hooksy is now over as G2 send him to the bench and begin their search for a new in-game leader. It's been a roller coaster few years filled with memes, subpar HLTV ratings, and even a few big wins. But now that it's done, who will lead Nico and Monacy? Before we get into today's Don't At Me, I'm hopping in to let you know that we've partnered with Cash App to bring you an exciting new season of our flagship franchise, The Story Of. Cash App is a P2P finance app that allows you to send, spend, save, and invest your money on your terms. Overdraft protection, card lock, high yield savings accounts, Cash App has it all. The latest episode of this season of The Story Of is live on our YouTube channel channel right now. Also check out Cash App using the link in the description below. Now let's get back to the Don't At Me. On Monday, June 1st, G2 released a heartfelt farewell video for their IGL Hooksy after nearly two years with the team. This announcement comes shortly after the benching of Nexa, their rifler who has already been replaced by the Guatemalan Malbs. Now G2 has the historically difficult task of finding a new IGL to captain their two superstars. But before we get into that, it's time we pay our respects to the Giga Chad, quite possibly the most criticized player in Counter-Strike history. Hooksy first took control of G2 back in August of 2022 after replacing Alexi B. And things started off very well, with the group winning the last event of the year, breaking themselves out of a massive, years-long slump. But this guy all the way on the left, this is for him, honestly. For me, he is the MVP of this event, that he's decided to stay with us. After everything that happened to him, he decided to stay and be, be with us and I am, we just vote for him, all of us here, and I hope we'll keep fighting. Thank you, Rasmus, once more. The good times kept rolling into 2023 with Hooksy helping the boys win at Katowice, making the team look like the real deal. Yeah, he sure as hell wasn't a fragging IGL, but he was finding results, results that the team desperately needed. Well, he was finding results. You see, after Kato, things took a turn for the worse as did Hooksy's public perception. Sure, IGLs aren't known for their mechanical ability, but some were questioning whether or not he had the skill to lead a team like G2. Analysts, fans, everyone began critiquing this guy. And after every single loss, he was the scapegoat. But Hooksy, he didn't give a shit what people said. You got a big grand final tomorrow, what do you say? They hate us, no? Yeah, <laughs> I okay! Uh, I don't know, it's just like, people who say I'm shit just doesn't understand the game. This consistent attitude in part helped birth the Hooksy Giga Chad meme, as well as a substantial army of staunch defenders and ironic fans who cheered at his every kill. And whether it helped or not, G2 double dipped, winning IEM Cologne in August. D has D, the last to fall is G2! Manifest greatness! Now, looming in the shadows of that win was obviously a new game that was likely going to shake up a lot of teams. But who knows, maybe as guys like Simple wavered, Hooksy would find new strides with the game. Unfortunately, he didn't. Actually, you can argue he got a little bit worse and G2 struggles resumed. The hate for Hooksy was at an all time high and it did feel like maybe his time was up. However, the nail in the coffin was likely I am Dallas. Hooksy was away at his sister's wedding, G2 won without him, and the org claimed they learned a lot from that event. Which brings us to today. As I said, I feel like Hooksy has to be one of the most criticized players of all time. Did he deserve it all? I don't think so. IGLing two of the best players in the world on one of the biggest teams is no easy task. And I will personally always respect the guy for how positively he carried himself professionally, especially under all that pressure and scrutiny. Plus, he got three big dubs, which is more than most can say. I think Hooksy was just a bit of a punching bag for the entire community, but I do agree that the team was still in need of a change. I mean, at this point, I assume Hunter and G2 are having conversations as well. That being said, it was fun while it lasted. The Hooksy meme will live on in infamy forever, 
and I don't think this is the last we've seen of the Giga Chad. Now, as for G2, they now have the difficult task of finding a new in-game leader. We can guess as to who that might be. Cadian is now a free man, though I highly doubt they would go for him given how badly his personality would clash with Nico and Monacy's. Personally, I think it would be cool as hell to see Glaive on G2, but I don't know what his willingness to leave Ents is or how much his buyout would even be at this point. However, all this hypothesizing might not matter because just like Team Liquid, the answer might already be on the team. That's right, the likely answer is that Nico will once again try his hand at IGLing. It's not 100% confirmed, but there have been multiple hints to suggest so. Last month, after winning IEM Dallas without Hooksy, Nico spoke to Dust2, claiming that his future in the game was likely a path towards captaincy. 100% at some point in my career I'll become an IGL, it's not gonna happen yet, but uh, that was my goal. Uh, I mean, I had that in mind for like quite some time. I know how I wanna end my career and that's definitely gonna be as an IGL because I think that is my strength, even though people didn't like me, they didn't like seeing me being IGL back then, they just couldn't really accept it, even though if I was doing good or bad, they just couldn't accept it, while for this event, for example, everyone's like, come back, you're not being IGL, you know, you're doing great, so uh, it's it's a bit uh, wild for me, but uh, overall, uh, it was a great learning experience, and it's a good confidence for me that, like, you know, reading the game and everything, so... Uh, like nothing's gonna change yet, but uh, definitely at some point in my career, uh, I should transition into the IGL. More evidence was then provided by Stewie during his impromptu interview with Maui Snake, where he claimed that Nico was doing all the calling at that event. It's possible that Hooksy was already on his way out, and then Nico proved that he can call by winning Dallas, meaning that he is up next for the team. If this is in fact the case, then someone will obviously then need to replace Nico. Yes, big shoes to fill, but there are plenty of talented young riflers out there who would probably die for a chance to play on his team. For the time being, that someone is the one and only Snacks. Bit of an interesting choice, I must say, but there is the Taz connection and definitely worse picks. Still, I doubt this is a permanent fix. Now, as I said, Nico has IGL before, back when he was on phase, and it famously didn't go well. That being said, a lot has changed in those five or so years. Nico is older and more mature, so maybe he is the one that is going to lead this team to their first major win. Plus, he even asked Twitter if he should IGL once again, and everyone seemed pretty on board with the idea, so case closed. Regardless, I don't think G2 is quite finished making changes yet, or if any of this will be permanent solutions. But until we know more, let me know what you think about Hooksy's departure from the team, and the reality that Nico may be once again IGLing. It would be interesting, if all along Nico needed to win his first major by being the captain. Maybe maybe that's what's been holding him back these these past five years at least. But now it's also interesting that all these like extremely talented riflers like Nico and Twist are now wanting to IGL. Seems like there's a shift in Counter-Strike happening and I'm curious if we'll see more of it.